Hello friends, before I start the class today, I would like to thank each and every one of you for supporting my channel and giving me motivation to upload more videos. In today's class, I am planning to cover the fuel planning aspects on a EDTO flight. In an EDTO flight, fuel planning, we consider three scenarios. The first one being the aircraft to fly with one engine in operating speed, which is approved by the regulator from which you have obtained the certification at the one engine in operative ceiling. The second one is the pressurization failure on route. After having suffered the pressurization failure, you will be descending down to fly level 100 or Mora, which river is higher and the fly with a speed of long range cruise and the diver to the suitable on route alternate. And the third one is the engine failure plus the pressurization failure in which the aircraft is to descend at fly level 100 or Mora, which river is higher and the fly with a speed of one engine in operative which has been approved by the regulator. In my last class we have discussed about the equitime point. Equitime point is a point on route from where it takes equal amount of time to proceed to two suitable alternates. The first may be the equitime point between my departure airport to my first alternate. Second being the equitime point between the first alternate to the second alternate and so on and so forth. Out of these equitime points, there will be one equitime point from where it takes maximum amount of fuel to divert to the suitable alternate after considering the three scenarios that is one engine failure, pressurization failure or a combination of both. That particular ETP from where it requires maximum amount of fuel to divert to a suitable alternate is known as a critical point and the fuel required to divert from that particular equitime point to the suitable alternate is known as the critical fuel. In this particular route, the critical fuel will be that fuel required to fly from Nairobi to the equitime point 4, which is the farthest point from Nairobi and to proceed to either Colombo or Singapore under the degraded condition that is engine failure, pressurization failure or the combination of both. Normally the critical point will lie at the last equitime point as we see that the last equitime point is the farthest out of all the ETPs. However, if you look at this particular diagram, that critical point may be ETP2 in this case. Why? Basically the ETP3 is right next to door 2 both this airport 1 and 2 and whereas the ETP2 lies at the extremities of the larger circle which was drawn using 120 minutes or 90 minutes or that particular maximum diversion time and the corresponding maximum diversion distance. So therefore in this scenario it may take more fuel to divert from ETP2 to this particular airport or to this particular airport. So therefore in such scenarios the last but one ETP may be the critical point. Otherwise normally the last ETP would be the critical point. And the fuel required from the departure airport to the ETP under normal condition and from the critical point to the alternate is what we call it as a critical fuel. Now let's have a look at the composition of the critical fuel. The critical fuel is that fuel which is required to fly from the departure airport to the critical point. Thereafter we will consider one failure that is out of one engine failure, pressurization failure or a combination of both. Under this condition we will have to descend from the normal cruising altitude to the altitude where we intend to descend 
In case of a one engine failure, it will be OEI ceiling. In case of a pressurization failure, it will be either 100 or Mora receiver is higher. And in case of a combination of both engine failure as well as a pressurization failure, the altitude where we are going to be descending will be fly level 100 or Mora receiver is higher. And thereafter, the fuel required to cruise to the EDTO alternate aerodrome at that particular level, descend and haul over the EDTO alternate aerodrome for 15 minutes at 1500 feet above the aerodrome. And the fuel required to make an approach and the land at the EDTO alternate aerodrome. And we also must consider the additional fuel which is required to carry out that EDTO. And what exactly is this additional fuel? The additional fuel allowance are the fuel increment which we need to cater for the error in the prediction of the wind. That is number one. The EDTO fuel planning can be done under two scenarios. One considering the forecast wind, the second being considering the nil wind condition. If or your company is planning with the forecast wind. In case of a headwind, in order to cater for the wind error, I will compute the fuel using 5% additional headwind component. For example, if you are expecting 100 knots of headwind component, then I will compute the fuel using 105 knots of headwind component. Similarly, if you are expecting a tailwind component of 100 knots, the fuel will be computed using a ground speed corresponding to 95 knots which is catering for 5% of the wind component. If that operator or your company is not using the forecast wind, the fuel also can be computed using the nil wind condition. In this case, the second method is to compute the fuel using nil wind condition. In this case, after having arrived at the fuel to divert an additional 5% must be added. For example, if the fuel calculated is 10,000 kg and then 5% of 10,000 that is 500 kg of fuel must be added to the computed figure in order to cater for the errors in the prediction of the wind. The second condition being the fuel for the effect of potential ice accumulation. I repeat this is potential ice accumulation on the unheated surface there is the airframe icing in that case that i need to add the fuel for 10 percent of the entire time during which the icing is forecast including the fuel used for the engine and the wing anti-icing during this period for example if you have a potential icing for 30 minutes then 10 percent of 30 minutes that is three minutes will be considered under increased fuel consumption that is expecting that you will be using the engine as well as the wing anti-icing in this period. The third consideration of the additional fuel is that performance factor or the fuel factor to account for the degradation of the engine. As the aircraft is as is, there will be additional amount of drag or there will be degradation in the engine performance. Therefore, the fuel flow per nautical mile cover or the specific range will be dropping. So therefore, in order to cater for this, you must use the fuel factor or in case if you are not using the fuel factor or the performance factor, then additional 5% must be added in the computed fuel figure. And thereafter, if you have to use the APU during the diversion, then the time for which the APU is going to be using, then the necessary fuel for uses of the APU must be added. The lastly, in case if the aircraft is dispatched with a particular CDL or the MEL, then the additional fuel required for that particular CDL and the MEL must be added to the total fuel required. So now let's have a comparison between the normal fuel. When I say the normal fuel, it is the block fuel which is required to fly from one place to another place. In my example, from Nairobi to Singapore. There is the block fuel will consist of the taxi fuel, second one the trip fuel from Nairobi to Singapore and then contingency fuel which is 5% of the trip fuel 
and thereafter the alternate this alternate is the destination alternate fuel and then final 30 minutes reserve under the extra fuel if you are carrying any additional the total of all this fuel is what we call it as a block fuel for the sector which you are flying this needs to compare with the EDTO critical fuel as we have discussed earlier the EDTO critical fuel will consist of the taxi fuel thereafter the fuel to fly to the CP under normal condition because nothing is expected to happen to the up to the critical point thereafter the critical fuel which we have discussed just now the sum of all this will give you the critical fuel in this example let us consider 9600 and the fuel required to fly from Nairobi to Singapore that fuel block fuel is 9800 so in this case the critical fuel required is lesser than the block fuel so therefore I will not face any difficulties the second consideration being that the EDT of critical fuel that is the taxi fuel to the CP and the additional critical fuel happens to be 10,000 in this case the EDTO critical fuel is more than the block fuel which is required so in this case I will be able to carry out a normal flight from Nairobi to Singapore however on route if I have to divert for any reason from the critical point then I will run short of 200 kg this 200 kg will be added as a EDTO additional fuel this 200 kg is what we call it as a EDTO additional fuel so now let's have a look how this fuel is calculated in this example I have considered that our ETB4 which was discussed earlier is the critical point the coordinate of ETB4 under one engine inoperative is given here and the coordinate of the critical point with pressurization failure is given here and the coordinate of the critical point considering both the failures are given here normally for most of the aircraft only one engine inoperative is never fuel critical at all but however we still need to calculate it so now let's have a look at the fuel required to proceed from your departure airport to the ETP4 okay under one engine inoperative that is 4000 kg here in this case and the fuel required to proceed to the critical point considered under pressurization failure is 4300 and the fuel required from Nairobi to the critical point considering both the failure is 4200 and at the time is is given 1 hour 42 1 hour 49 and 1 hour 45 and the distance is given 700 720 and the 750 respectively from that particular ETP which we call it as a critical point we are required to proceed to two set of alternates the alternate one and the alternate two as these two alternates this ETP or this critical point is an equi time point the time required to go to this particular airport XXXX is 130 and the YY YY is 130 they should be equal similarly in the event of a pressurization failure the time required to divert to either of these airport is 1 hour 55 minutes each and the under one engine plus pressurization failure it is 1 hour 45 minutes and the fuel required from that critical point to reach either of this is 5300 5300 in case of one engine inoperative and the 5700 and 5700 in case of a pressurization failure and if we consider both pressurization and the engine failure that becomes 5400 so now we need to add up the fuel required to go to the CP and the fuel required from the CP to divert to the suitable alternate similarly for this also and similarly for this also so now after having added this two figure it is known that it is 4300 it is 5700 this particular fuel that is the addition of 4300 plus 5700 which is 10,000 is the fuel required 
to divert from the critical point to the suitable alternate which is the highest out of the three so this particular fuel figure that is 10,000 is what we call it as the critical fuel and this particular point that is not 12545 and 12645.5 this becomes the critical point after having seen this let's have a look at how the fuel ship is prepared so we have the normal taxi fuel the trip fuel contingency fuel which is five percent the alternate fuel is 800 final reserve that is to fly for 30 minutes at 1500 feet is 1200 extra fuel let's consider that 2000 correction 250 the sum of all this thing is let's say 9800 which is the normal block fuel required to fly from Nairobi to Singapore now as we discussed earlier the fuel required to fly from the critical point to that suitable alternate was 10,000 feet so therefore an additional 200 cases is required in order to carry out that EDTO flight. This 200 is what we call it as a EDTO additional fuel. In some of the flight plan depending upon your company it may be given as, as EDTO additional fuel or the dispatch ETP fuel. So therefore in order to complete this sector I require I am required to have 10,000 kg of fuel which is the minimum fuel required to fly in this sector. After having a look at fuel sheet, now we will have a look at the sample flight plan. This is only for the sample. Your company may have different format. Here it is a departure airport from where I have to reach to the waypoint 1 which is on the track of 090. 120 nautical miles with a TAS of 260 and the ground speed of 265 and the, during which the phase of the flight is climbing the wind velocity is given here so he will give you the elapsed time here and the cumulative time cumulative time here then from waypoint 1 to the top of climb which is on the same track of 090 and distance is 20 the task ground speed is given here and after having reached the top of climb Okay, you are going to proceed to the waypoint number 2 on the track, distance, TSN ground speed, fly level plan is fly level 330, wind velocity is given here and uh, the ET is, that is elapsed time between this point and this point is given here and uh, the cumulative time will be given here and uh, the fuel expected at this particular waypoint is given here and then so and so forth now we have got the first point which is the eep1 okay there is the edto entry point one down below your company will give the eep1 the coordinate is given here similarly as i proceed further then i will have the equitime point one which is between the departure airport to the first possible alternate the coordinates of the etp1 is also given like this similarly i will proceed to waypoint number four then exit point one, ED to exit point one. In that for the here, ED to exit point one. Here the ED to exit point coordinates are also given. So now the flight plan will continue till the end of the flight plan. With this, I finish today's topic. The ETO, that is fourth class on the ED to. I thank you for watching this video. You can drop your questions or comment if you have any on the comment box, and I kindly do subscribe and share it to your friends thank you very much have a nice day